Hey guys, it's Dex here, and I'm here with a very dear friend, Amanda Morgan. She has a brilliant new program called Food or Fiction, and today she is going to give us three things that we are doing right now. This is this is happening in your life right now that is completely killing you. It's, you're probably going to die if you continue to do these three things. Welcome, Amanda. Hi, how are you, Bex? I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, you guys aren't really going to die. That was me being funny. I wanted her to laugh harder. Um, but we are going to give you three, three very, very good bits of advice, um, a little bit of education on nutrition that I still see you guys tripping up on. I mean, the information is out there. We have Google, but you're still making these three mistakes. And it's it's killing me. It's it's breaking my heart. So we're going to get right into number one, and we're going to talk about juice cleanses. Oh, this is such a juicy, no pun intended, topic. And I feel like it's just so timely because spring is coming up. So, you know, so many of us have been like hiding under our bulky sweatshirts and, and our sweaters. And now all of a sudden we're like, oh, it's, you know, time for spring. And the first thing that people think to do is go on a cleanse. You know, I don't want to give juice cleanses a bad name. I think they're great. And I think juicing in general is great, but there are things that I want all of us to start paying attention to. So um, the ingredients being one, how our bodies react to doing a cleanse of this nature and the way that the juice is processed. Have you ever done a juice cleanse, Bex? I'm curious. I've been in the middle of a gluten-free challenge with my audience for the month of April because I had some skin stuff coming up and some hormonal stuff coming up. So I'm a big fan of eliminating things to see, you know, what might be, you know, go, you know, what might be working against you, but adding something in to clean out other things that you're putting into your body doesn't really make sense to me. I would rather just get rid of the bad stuff than try to cleanse, you know, bad habits away. You're kind of bringing up the whole mindset piece. And I think that's where our society really struggles. There's this whole perception around food that like, we're going to go on a cleanse to pretty much counterbalance every, all this, you know, quote unquote bad that we've done for the past couple of months. So if we can come at cleansing from a totally different mindset and look at it like, okay, I want to give, you know, my body a break. My digestive system is always working and who doesn't like a break? So it's important to just do that, not so much as a reset, but um, just as like a, a ritual, you know what I mean? Kind of coming at it from just a, a healthier place will help us choose cleanses that maybe aren't so extreme. All of these cleanses have kind of, you know, popped up out of nowhere. When we think about juice cleanses in the past five or 10 years, everything's just exploded. So every company and their mother wants to make some sort of product to get into that market. When we think about green juice, we think, okay, low in sugar, full of antioxidants and delicious fruits and vegetables. But the issue is that a lot of these juices, even from some of the big companies, contain as much as 25 to 40 grams of sugar per bottle, which is like, that's a lot of sugar. And I understand the argument, you know, the body processes sugar of this nature different than it would if you're, you know, let's say having like a can of Coke or something. Um, but it is still important to pay attention to this because what I'm going to talk about in a second, a lot of people don't react well to this high sugar coming into the body. Um, you can deal with a lot of those blood sugar roller coasters, which I'm sure you and I are very familiar with. The ingredients is key. Just making sure if you want to do a cleanse of this nature, you're turning the bottle around, you're reading the ingredients, you're making sure the sugar is relatively low, you're making sure it's organic, right? Because if you're doing a cleanse that, you know, is not organic and it's green juice, it kind of does defeat the purpose. Um, and you also want to pay attention to how it's processed. In a perfect world, if we were going to do a cleanse like this, we would be doing it right in our kitchen. Most of us just don't have the time to sit there. And if you think about like how many juices and a cleanse you're drinking per day, it's what, five or six? That's a lot of time in the kitchen to spend like like making juice. So, you know, like I said, it's, it's kind of a double edged sword argument. We, we are, um, we have the ability to access more juice, organic juice now more than ever before, but we really want to pay attention to the quality of the juice. Okay. So you mentioned sugar, which is my favorite thing in the entire universe. And I try to have lots and lots and lots of it every single day. And there's a lot of controversy surrounding sugars, which sugars are good, which sugars we should avoid. And then also fats. And I'm also a huge fan of fat. I'm probably on a five avocado a day diet. So let's talk about sugars and fats and the hype 
that is surrounding those? There's, oh, Bex, there's just so <laughs> much. <laughs> this is like one of those situations where I'm like, where do I start? Because there's so much misinformation out there when it comes to those two topics. If we think back 20, 30 years, this whole low fat trend started in the 80s and 90s. Fat is not bad for you, right? It's it's the type of fat and the quality of fat that we have to pay attention to. You mentioned having a bunch of avocados in a day. That is great. Choosing fats like avocado, nuts and seeds, coconut oil, with which like I smear on everything, you know, including my body. So <laughs> um, those are wonderful types of fat. So it's important, especially I see with this, this with women to get out of that mindset of thinking that fat is the enemy because it's not, it's the quality of fat that matters. And it's not our fault because like I just mentioned, we've been trained to think like this for decades. So just getting away from thinking that fat is the problem and, you know, understanding that sugar is actually the problem. It's crazy. We were told that fat was the problem. And what happened in from a food manufacturing perspective is all of these companies started to co overcompensate with sugar for the lack of fat. And this trend has just kind of stayed with us over the years. And now sugar is in everything. And it's impossible to hide from. There's the obvious sources like the donuts, the cookies, the cakes, whatever it might be. But then there's also the more obscure sources like the ketchup or the pasta sauce or the cereal, I mean the granola. So again, it comes down to choosing whole foods, choosing foods that don't have labels, choosing things like, you know, again, fruits and vegetables, when the fruits have sugars, when, you know, eaten in the right amounts and at the right you know, time of day or, you know, whatever works for you and your energy level and your exercise levels and all of those things, they can really serve you. But avoiding processed foods, which kind of leads us right into number three, it's the healthy foods labeled as healthy foods that aren't so great for us that are loaded with sugars and what are we doing wrong there again i'm gonna bring up um kind of like the food marketing perspective and and how we can kind of blame them for all of this so you know they are just doing their job so we can't hate on them too much yes, um, we, can. we we have to put the the power in our own hands and this comes with education now when it comes to uh, the hype around healthy foods it's just it's so out there i mean we just talked about this with juice cleanses but it's it's all over the place all of these trends that kind of come up in the moment these guys are like man i need to like jump on that bandwagon to sell whatever my next product is it could be even if it's a raw food if it's gluten-free if it's organic if it's non-gmo these are hot button words in the marketplace right now. And these food manufacturers know this. They're really smart. So no matter what the food is, it could be organic tortilla chips. It could be cereals. It could be oh, some of the worst offenders, salad dressings, which like drive me crazy. It could be protein bars, which are a whole, you know, another conversation. All these packaged foods that, you know, are seemingly healthy, right? on the go foods like a protein bar crackers whatever it is um they could be uh, actually sabotaging our health instead of helping it if you see these claims on the front of the package it's almost like you want to run the other way right <laughs> exactly no just because something's organic just because it's non-gmo or gluten-free or soy free or sugar free or low mm -hmm. fat so these are the worst offenders does not mean that it's good for you but i gotta tell you i've spent the past so my daughter's turning, or she just turned 18. Um, I've spent the past 18 years really educating myself about food and nutrition, and I have some of the best in the business by my side teaching me. My audience doesn't have a 18 years to learn this stuff, or you know, access to the top wellness professionals like I do. But this is why I'm having you on today because you have a really awesome program. I'm going to tell you guys right now on the bottom of your screen, this whole video, bexandfriends.com is where you can find out more info, but you definitely, definitely have to click the link as soon as you're done listening to Amanda speak all about her amazing, amazing new project. So we are uh, doing a webinar to kind of talk about three trendy foods that you think are healthy but need to question. So we are going to touch on um, green juices, the gluten-free trend, and what you need to know about that as well as protein bars because all three of those before I knew anything about nutrition those ones got me like I fell for everything so it's important to um, to kind of like dig in and when it comes to the food or fiction program 
we are taking what I believe to be the most conflicting topics out there when it comes to nutrition and learning about them in a way that is just easy to understand and super fun. So we're talking about sugar, we're talking about soy, because that was another really big one for me when I was uh, vegetarian all those years ago before I understood what the differences in fermented and unfermented soy were. Uh, we're talking about dairy. So is all dairy bad? You know, what's grass fed mean? All these things that we see in stores. How can we understand all of these labels and topics uh, in a way that doesn't seem scary and isn't too scientific and last but not least gluten so talking about you know the epidemic that's kind of come up why most people actually have a sensitivity to gluten and that's because uh you know our food supply and how grains are raised nowadays is just so different from you know 50 years ago so you know we're going to break all these topics down in a way so that when you go to the grocery store you just feel so confident and you don't even have to worry about all those labels that we were just talking about because you know you're, you know, S-H-I-T, so <laughs> you don't have to worry. <laughs> Everything is just in your, in your mind. You feel confident. There's just, there is such a difference between being someone who walks into a grocery store falling for whatever these claims are versus the person that just feels educated. And I think that's the gap that's kind of happening in our marketplace. There's a misperception about these trends and you know i'm gonna i'm gonna clear all that up so you guys right now now that you're done watching this super informative awesome video i love bringing you the best people in the biz you're gonna go to bexandfriends.com you're gonna sign up for the webinar you're gonna get all the good info and then you're gonna come back to me you're gonna thank me but you're also gonna give me your feedback and tell me what you learned and participate in my gluten-free challenge because it's fun and you really don't need it anyway so thank you so much amanda it's always a blast with you i have no doubt about that <laughs> and i will see you guys soon in another bex life video She's so Connecticut right now in this video, and I'm so Jersey. <laughs> She's so I'm so now. Jersey. I really am. Yeah. This is me trying to be a proper human being. Like I, know, you should see me. I don't. I don't put makeup on. I don't get out of like workout clothes. I should have just worn a sweatshirt, but you know, it's all good.